So we just finished up our theater room in the basement and today I'm gonna to be showing you how we built this floating media console for it. The cabinet carcass, or the cabinet rather, is going to be made out of three quarter inch plywood. Now, throwing a full sheet of three quarter inch plywood up on the table saw sounds like a terrible idea to me, so my new found friend is this Craig track saw. And the nice thing about this is you can simply lay a sheet of plywood on top of a piece of insulation on the ground, and then we've got our track saw. You mark out two tick marks for the line that you wanna cut, you lay the track, line that up with those two tick marks, and you can make a nice, smooth, clean cut with the track saw. Now, when it comes to repetitive cuts, we're gonna be heading back over to the table saw to make sure that everything is perfectly the same. Like, for instance, all of our shelves, we want them to be exactly the same dimensions. Now, we're gonna be using pocket hole joinery. As you already saw me, I was using the Craig Foreman. This is a like a, a pocket hole machine, so it kind of automates the process a little bit and makes drilling pocket holes a whole lot faster. However, there are plenty of cheaper versions of a pocket hole jigs uh, where you would use your own drill, and that could be done for even down to like the, I think some of those pocket hole jigs are like 40 bucks. Now two of those vertical pieces are gonna be in the middle of the unit and I wanna run a French cleat across the top back of the unit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna notch that out. I'm gonna take that notch all the way down to the top of the first shelf, which is 9.75 inches. So nine, inch, nine and three quarters of an inch down. Um, I'll make a notch three quarters of an inch in and up and that's just gonna be a little recess for our French cleat to run from all the way across the back of the unit, essentially. Uh, and we'll be able to hang it on the wall nice and level. All right, so when you cut out this notch, make sure that you take note where the pocket holes are. Since the inside of this is gonna be open, we're gonna wanna make sure that the pocket holes are on the inside of the cabinets. Therefore, the notches need to be towards the back with the pocket holes going up and out. All right, so I'm gonna use the shelf as a spacer for my next piece. Um, we're going to attach this with one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws as well. We'll lay it down a bead of glue just like we did for the ends. And then we've got our notch towards the back of the unit. So we'll flush up the front and make sure we're all good there. And then we'll do the same for the other side. If you like videos like this and you wanna see more of them, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. And also don't forget to ring that bell right next to it so that you get notifications anytime we drop a new video. So we built the whole structure out of birch plywood and we thought we were gonna be oiling the plywood um, for the doors and we did. However, the doors turned out really blotchy. It was a cheaper, um, a cheaper birch plywood that we were using. So what we opted for was to go ahead and order, or special order rather, the walnut veneered doors. So the front of these doors are actually a walnut but this is a standard plywood. It's a higher grade of plywood. So even the back of, even though it's not walnut, it's stained up just fine. So when it came to the hinges, we went with a European style full overlay hinge. And basically the European style is a frame, is for frameless cabinets, which this is, doesn't have a face frame. So, and the full overlay means that the edge of the cabinet is going to overlay the entire thickness of this plywood edge that the cabinet has. As far as installing the hinges, 
I went with, I used the, uh, the Craig concealed hinge jig. And the nice thing about this is it's a cheap jig, not cheap as in quality, cheap as in price. It's an inexpensive jig. And the nice thing is that you can, uh, it's got a depth uh, collar on it, a, a stop that will allow you to drill the same depth hole um, with your Forstner bit every time. And you can also reference the side of the jig for against the edge of the door. And that's gonna give you the same um, hole location um, on your door each time. So with the holes drilled into the doors, then we moved on to a piece of scrap um, plywood as a template. And what I did was I, I drilled the holes the same distance from the edge on that plywood template. And the plywood template is gonna be um, the same thickness of the door, it's just plywood. So, but it's also gonna be narrower. And the reason for that is so that I can use that as the door with the hinge attached to it. Um, and then I can place that in the door location reference the top and the side of the cabinet to that template and then install the base inside of the cabinet once both of the bases are installed in the cabinet then i can remove the template from the hinges or from the bases rather basically separating the hinge so that um, then the door can receive the cups um, of the cup side of the hinge that can get screwed into the door and then the door can mount in place what you also notice is that we've got a couple of these hinge lights in there and it's a really cheap way to light up the inside of your cabinet. I found those on Amazon and they've got a little trigger here so when the door closes, the light goes off, uh, which works out really nice for a setting like this, a movie theater where the lighting is typically gonna be on the lower side. Um, so we've got stuff like snacks and popcorn bowls. There's a couple of attachments that go with our seats as far as like tray tables and wine glass holders and stuff like that and popcorn bowls that are gonna be stored in here while on the other side, Braden will have all of his game remotes for his Xbox and um, you know different things like that. We are really looking forward to using this space and I am super happy that it's finally done. Um, if you wanna learn more about how we built the theater riser that elevated our back row of seats, then we've also got a video on that. And I've got a whole entire blog post on the carpet install and how we went through Home Depot and had them install the carpet in the theater room and how well it turned out. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, but before you go, make sure you check out that video over there in that corner. YouTube thinks you'll like it and I do too. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that button right there. And if you want a full write up and the detailed plans with cut lists and parts and all that stuff, that's gonna have a link right here directly to my website. Until next time, be safe and happy building.